Hey guys, it's Judy and I have a card process video for you to, sh to show you. And um, this is using a sister stamp, a uh, stamp. Uh, it's, uh, what is the name? I showed it, I think it's Kiomo, I'm not sure. Um, but it's the one with the butterfly. And I just love their stamps and I love their images. And I am using a paper pad that I got from a rat in Iraq from Vicky Milo Bono. Hi, Vicky. And it's the print shop from Studio Calico. And I thought that print would look great as a as a pattern for her kimono. So you'll see I stamped the image first on my um, Nina Solar White using Memento Black, and then I stamped it again on the um, the pattern paper. Now the first one I didn't like where I stamped it because I wanted certain colors so the second stamp I stamped it along more of the pinks. So I'm going to start Copic coloring. I'm getting my markers ready and I'm gonna turn on some music. <laughs> so here goes. Um, for the skin tones I am using E000 and that's pale fruit pink and that is my go-to base and then raw silk in E53 for the shadowing and I usually put shadows right where the bangs are under the hair and then also like under the eyes and the the mouth and then the hands are covered by the dress and now for um, I'm not going to do much coloring, I'm just going to do the hair now. And then it's C3, C5, and C7. And um, I start with the darkest, C7, and I, yeah, I realized I was out of frame. So it's C7, then C5, and then um, the C3 for that middle light highlight. And then I go back with C5 and C7. And I just go back and forth just so it blends a little more. I add more of the C7 to add more of the hairline. And then at the very end, I well, then I go back with the lightest color, C3, and then I just go back and forth. And I use my C7 to kind of highlight. Now I'm gonna do her little, um, little um, ponytails. I'm sorry, my hands in the way, but just the same concept: dark to light, light back to dark, and so forth. There you go. And um, so yeah, like I said, I, oh, there was a little spot that kind of I uh, with the hair that came out, and then I just used my colorless blender to kind of erase, quote unquote, erase it, and then I went back in with the E53. So that's all the coloring I'm really going to do. And then there's the R20 for the cheeks. And then I blend back with the E53. Um, and then I do the, the butterfly. But I, I plan on paper piecing so I don't Copic color her dress. And then I think I do change the colors on the butterfly later. <laughs> but I'll show you that. So here I go. Using my cutter bee, I just cut it out um, a really gross, you know, outline, leaving a little white around. And I, I wasn't sure whether I was going to paper piece her hair bows as well or not, but I am just um, um, fussy cutting her dress, her kimono, and the boring part. <laughs> But then I realized um, I wanted her neck to show a little. It wasn't part of the dress, so I'm cutting out the first V to show the dress. And then that's how the dress looks. And I'm looking, and of course her OB, the belt, um, needs some color. So I decided to use R39 Garnet to darken it. And then I'm using R27 and R39. Those are my go-to reds um, just to do the bows in her hair, kind of to match her obi. And 
this. So there we go. And I am going to glue that down where I do the red on her shoes as well. And then I'm using my Tombow Multi. And then I end up squirting this. I use the wider tip and then I end up squeezing and all the, <laughs> all the glue came out the smaller tip. So yeah, I don't use the wider side too often. <laughs> and then I'm just using my tweezers to uh, also cut her V to kind of glue that back on. And I love how that turned out. And I'm using the Canium Red again, R27, and I decide I wanted the butterfly to have some red. Just to kind of have that red theme going from, from the girl's um, belt and, and uh, hair bows to the butterfly. So it kind of creates that triangular pattern, a visual pattern. And so the card base is a red um, A2 size card. So I, I scored it at four and a quarter. And that's a Unity stamp, background stamp with the butterflies. I don't know the name of it, I'm sorry. I'm planning to do some heat embossing on that. So I'm using my Fiskars stamp press. And I'm going to use my Versamark. And basically just make sure I get good coverage and yay I found my embossing buddy I'm just gonna use that to get rid of any dirt or stuff I don't want on the paper and then you can see I embossed it down and I am going to use my gold embossing I think it's just like Michael's detailed gold embossing powder um, so it gets everywhere you see it's all over my fingers all over my desk and I try to clean up a little or else it will be everywhere so I'm gonna heat set it I'm just gonna heat it up I love heat embossing I just think it's so cool just to look at how it transforms into this beautiful shimmer of color and I just love the dimension it adds and then also the sparkle. So I'm going to trim that down um, to use it as a mat. But I'm thinking I want some of that pattern paper too. So I'm using what's left over of that sheet. And the paper pad, it comes with two of them. But um, I'm trying to save all my, because <laughs> I love that pattern paper. I'm going to save all the pieces I can. And I'm trimming down the butterfly one. And, but I want to have enough space so you can see the pattern paper too. So I end up trimming the butterfly a little more. I'm just trying to figure out the placement of everything. And I want her higher up on the paper. And then um, I'm trimming this a little narrower because I do want to see more of that color pattern in the background. And then I'm trying to figure out how much I want to trim off. And I think I trimmed off a little too much of that one because I think I wanted to keep all the butterflies kind of together. And I was like, whoa, that butterfly sheet is now super small. <laughs> but, but then I'm like, oh, but I can just put a sentiment on the bottom. So I'm like, ah, I trimmed off too much. I'm trying to, will it look good? If I piece it back together, I say, nah. So I will save that piece, and I will use that piece. So I end up moving her up a bit. So like she's like flying in the air, trying to catch the butterflies. And then I will put my sentiment on the bottom. I am looking for something. I'm looking for some red card stock, or I am, I think, that I'm going to put on the bottom, and that's where I will um, put my sentiment. Um, I'm looking for a sentiment. So that's a sister stamp, my, um, not sister stamp, um, it's scrappy mom stamp sentiment. And it's like the birthday extravaganza, I think. And so I'm thinking, yeah, the butterflies would look too much 
I think it's already too busy, so I wanted to ground it a little by using that red cardstock. So I just cut out a strip of that cardstock, and I'm going to stamp that image on that says just happy birthday to you. And this card is for my niece. I don't know if I mentioned that. But um, yeah, and I'm going to use Versa Fine because I love using that for stamped images because it's so detailed. I chose to put the sentiment all the way to the left because the girl is taking up the right side. So I want to keep it, and she's looking towards the left. So I do emboss. And with Versa Fine, it takes a while to, you know, dry. So you can put embo clear embossing powder on it and then heat that up. And it will take the embossing powder. So I just added that. And then before I um, now I'm gluing everything together um, and of course I'm out of ATG tape <laughs> so I have to use my smaller tape runner and then of course I want it to wobble so I add my action wobble it tells you where to put the top and what the base is so the top I always put the top down first on the image that needs to be moved and it fits perfectly sometimes I have to trim it but um, here I am adhering everything down I like to put a lot of adhesive because I don't want anything to fall off and especially for a child's card and I noticed it was crooked either I cut crooked or I tape crooked but I'm trying to re yeah realign that and there I go with the action wobble and definitely for a kid's card I love how that turned out so it really looks like she's chasing the butterflies and then I work on the inside of the card now and I have to use that uh, leftover piece that I embossed so I'm gonna stick it on the card somewhere but um, another um, image I mean, sentiment, may all your wishes come true, and that is also from the Scrappy Moms um, stamp sets. I love their sentiments. And then I'm using the Stampin' Up! in real red, and I'm re-inking the original focal image from the front, and I just stamp it on the inside, so it's like two-tone. I love doing that for the insides, using the girl images. Oops. And then I'm just going to stick that on the bottom. There we go. And there you go.